Good morning. Um, I'm Andrea Brosnan, Specialist Occupational Therapist, and I work for Tees Eskin Weir Valley Trust, and this is Gemma Atkinson, my colleague, also an occupational therapist. So what we're going to do is give you an overview of the setting where we work, and we're a bit one extreme to the other. From the other ladies, we work in a very small environment, and then Gemma's going to talk about how we actually use the DART system um, and how it works for us, really. So we work on a unit called Springwood. It's a specialist inpatient unit for older people with dementia uh, in complex needs, and it's in a very small market town in North Yorkshire called Moulton. We provide high quality 24 hour inpatient care for older people with complex organic illnesses. Majority of people have dementia, uh, but everybody, they're all very frail and very vulnerable. We've only been built not quite two years, so we're a very spacious and contemporary building and we provide 14 single end suite bedrooms, one of which is equipped as a high dependency suite. We have internal and external pathways which offer patients with dementia who can become anxious or agitated, the space to wander in a safe and secure environment. They're also based, one side is like a rural environment and the other side is more like an urban environment. So we can work with the patients wherever they've, they've, they've come from really. Patients are cared for by a highly trained multidisciplinary team. We have a consultant psychiatrist, dietitian, occupational therapist, physiotherapist, speech therapist, activity workers, nursing staff, and we've now just newly got a psychologist. So we're a big team in a little unit. So what do we, uh, what do we uh, define complex needs as? Complex needs is defined as a severe and lasting mental health problem, presenting with challenging behavior, requiring complex continuous care, and frequently requiring services from different practitioners in multiple settings. We take a wide age range of patients, however, predominantly they are over the age of 65, but this is determined on clinical need and we have found in the last few months that we are actually getting quite a lot of younger patients. So the average length of stay is needs led, but often is a significant amount of time. So sometimes some of the patients who came when we opened are still with us now. This enables staff to gain a rapport with the patients. Usually uh, they're admitted having a prior treatment on an assessment ward within North Yorkshire, generally either um, at Scarborough or at Harrogate. So if hopefully we do discharge some patients and it is to the most appropriate setting, but as a general rule, this will be 24 hour care. And we spend a long time in discharge as well, because uh, obviously people have often been through the care setting uh, and that's how they've ended up with us. So. so it will have been agreed by the care team and the person's family and or the carer that the, they require further specialist care so discharge can be safe and effective. So what challenges do we have at Springwood? So all our patients have severe cognitive impairment, difficulty in communication, difficulty with social interaction, lack of understanding, increased agitation and frustration. That the behavioral aspects are something that is a big thing on our unit. Increased aggression, lack of stimulation and meaningful activity and increased wandering and another big thing is poor sleep hygiene many people have turned their days into nights so how are the strengths so a lot of the patients they're they engage in doing it's not about the result it's about the activity they can follow a demonstration of instruction they enjoy cause and effect and it, a lot of them enjoy music and sound so how do we use the DART software? So we have one big main unit and two tablets, mainly used in a one-to-one -one setting as this is the most appropriate for clinical need with us. We leave it on the ward and we encourage all the staff and the visitors to use it when there's no OT or activity worker. And that's worked really, really well um, because everybody's now getting used to it being there and you use it for all different sorts of activities. 
So we use it to build rapport with our patients, to learn about their needs, especially useful for agency staff who actually don't know them, but obviously it's already on the system about their life story, and so they can use that as a tool to talk to them. And we use the collage display and we put that in their bedrooms so there is a snapshot of who they are uh, there for especially like agency staff uh, or visitors coming in. So it's engaging and personalising care relevant to that person's life and interests. And a big area is to build up a life story, to understand them as a person, thus enabling interaction on topics and subjects within their own interest. So, for example, we had a patient who was a very keen cyclist and one of the nurses actually uh, cycles for England. So that was a that was really good working environment that they actually could share. The information then can follow them after uh, discharge. So we send all the life story information with them and this ensures a smooth transition. We reminisce and we try to understand the importance in the patient's life. And we, it's to reduce agitation, boredom and provide meaningful activity. And they're all linked into the occupational therapy intervention plans. So this has resulted in a reduction of challenging behaviour and increased the meaningful activities on the ward. So I'll just hand over to Gemma now. OK. I'm going to talk a little bit about how we've actually used it with the patients and just a bit of a case study, really. So... Um, this patient, he was severely cognitively impaired, but he was very jovial, had a really good sense of humour. Um, he enjoyed activities, he really liked dancing and music, ball games, dusting, he loved the feather duster, um, pet therapy and the doll therapy. Um, it was obvious that he was completely able to understand our conversation and what we were saying, but he just was struggled a lot to verbalise his responses. It was very rare that you would get a complete sentence from him. It was even rare to sometimes get a yes or a no. Um, however, the thing that worked the best was he had a very supportive family. They gave us, a, it was about 78 pages, the most massive album you've ever seen of a life story. Um, and we, we were able to transfer that to the, the Dart software, which took a very long time, but it was so worthwhile and it was such a good example to use. Um, we obviously use this to engage the patient in the reminiscence. Because of his lack of speaking, it was just useful to be able to talk to him about it. And you, kn you knew he understood and he was giving you positive, um, non-verbal information back. Um, so this built up a therapeutic relationship between the staff, again, especially between the agency staff who weren't there all the time, um, and the patient. The original book was integral to the success of it. Without that book, we wouldn't have been able to, it wouldn't have been so fantastic. So it is important that family support and that information that you're getting from them. Um, it reflected his life and his humour just perfectly. There's a picture where there's a hole in the window and it just says a pheasant came through the window. Um, there's another one where he'd been on rallies. He was, he was a farmer, he'd been on rallies in London. Um, it, would, it just summed him up so beautifully. Um, so this, um, it was, it was used, there was obviously there's difficulties on a ward, patients are confused with things like personal care, they're going to get very agitated and anxious. By knowing those things about his life and being able to talk to him about meaningful things and I suppose let him understand that you knew him, it really facilitated those difficult situations. Um, secondly, <coughs> Uh, we've used it to reduce agitation in patients. Um, we had one lady, she had severe bouts of agitation and anxiety, distress, frustration. We tried lots of techniques, lots of distractions to try and lower the anxiety levels. But the only one that worked repeatedly, and it was very clear, it was completely down to that, was the relaxation application on the DART software. There's um, like a fairy CD one. Um, we tried to tie in tactile stimulation with this, um, but it was quite clear that it was the music that was doing the work. Um, the patient would be presenting, she'd be shouting, crying, verbalising, repeating certain words. Reassurance had no effect, that trying to engage with that patient had no effect. But when she was taken to a quiet room and put the music on, 
within minutes, it, she absolutely just visibly calmed, started to verbalise slower, started to talk. She would start to make sense, I suppose, the best way to say it is. Um, we've had several successes with the game applications on the unit. I was quite sceptic about how it would be very difficult to explain to a 90-year-old lady what a touchscreen tablet was and how you used it, um, especially as they weren't brought up with it and they've got a severe dementia. Um, but I was completely wrong, happily. Um, it's every person that I've used it with have been able to understand it because it's so simple. Um, the errors don't really impact on the game. It's not a failure when you when the game doesn't go right. Um, and it's I think the, the best plus of that is that we've used it in two ways. We've used it um, in very in depth and it's taken a lot of time to build the life story with one patient. But the other part of it is that we've been able to use it something that can just be picked up by staff, um, used to quickly engage with the patient. It takes that fear away because there's the prompts like that was spoken about before. All of us now are very used to tablets um, and it's something that can help develop a rapport when there's that limited time, limited staff resources and uh, difficulty in accessing a cupboard with some boxes of games. Uh, finally, our CQC report um, under the heading of good practice said that in the wards for older people service specifically on Springwood and Rowan Lee, which is our Scarborough assessment unit, they were using the specialist computer program to enable staff to interact with people with memory problems in a positive way. They were very impressed about how it has been implemented. Um, there's been more engagement in meaningful activity on the ward between staff and patients, I suppose in particular between the HCAs and the nurses. They've kind of picked it up and used it. It's exciting, it's new, it's something that they can relate to and they would go home and do. So it's something easy to pick up on the ward. Um, there's been more engagement between the staff and the patients and the carers. Um, visiting a ward like ours can be very difficult. It can be very upsetting, especially when you're moving down to not just partners and children, but to grandchildren. So this is something that really facilitates that conversation and interaction, and it's something fun, and it's something that's you're not focusing on all the negative things that are happening, it's focusing on the positive things and the ability. Um, and the success of it has led to the other wards wanting it. Uh, Scarborough's now got it, and uh, another one of our wards in Harrogate are now wanting to get it as well. And uh, that's it. <laughs>